So let's continue talking about interpreting exponential expression word problems by looking at a few more example problems. And the general idea is to compare our given exponential expression to essentially the general formula or the general pattern. And remember that general formula is that we have a multiplied by b to some t power, where a, that's our starting amount, b is our growth factor, or it could be our decay factor if it's going down from year to year, and t is the variable time. So let me just write that down very quickly. So for this particular problem, the expression 11 multiplied by 1.022 raised to the t power models the per capita gross domestic product, or GDP, of the U.S. in thousands of dollars as a function of the number of years since 1950. And we need to figure out what 1.022 represents in this expression. So let's first rewrite it. We have 11 times 1.022 all raised to the t power. Now we could just compare it to our general formula. And the better you get at these, the more you're going to do that, since that's the faster way to approach these. But you also want to understand why this is the general formula. And for us, we can see this 1.022, that's this value, that that is our growth factor. That's B in this formula. Whereas this 11, that's our starting amount. And T, of course, is our variable for time. So... Our growth factor, that's the amount we'll be multiplying by from year to year. And we can find that right here for letter B. The per capita GDP in the U.S. is multiplied by approximately 1.022 each year. So B would be the correct answer based on comparing it to the formula. But like I mentioned, we also want to understand why this is the formula. So to do that, let's just plug in a few different T values and see what happens. So when t is 0, we have 1.022 raised to the 0 power. And anything raised to the 0 power, we know it's just 1. So this is just 11. And you can see that 11, it does make sense that that's the starting amount. And in general, in our formula, when you raise b to the 0 power, that will just be a multiplied by 1, since b to the 0 is just 1. And so you would get back a when t is equal to 0. Now, if we look at when t is equal to 1, you can see we'd have 11 multiplied by 1.022 raised to the first power, or just 1.022. So that is the amount we multiplied by, this 1.022, to go from the starting year to the first year after or the first year since 1950. So this is really 1951, and this is 1950. And you can see if you keep going, when t is equal to 2, you take the previous year's amount, and we'll again multiply by 1.022. Since our, in our formula, we now have 11 times 1.022 raised to the second power. So you're multiplying by this growth factor twice now. You took the previous year's amount and then just multiplied by that growth factor again. And the further you go, so if t is equal to 3 or 4, you just repeatedly are multiplying by that 1.022. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense why b would be our final answer. But like I mentioned, really we just want to compare these to our general formula and that way we can go through these a little bit faster. But if you really want to check your work, you essentially just want to plug in different t-values, or you can make a table. So let's move on. We'll do a couple more problems. And for this one, the expression 1.01 multiplied by 1.005 raised to the t-power gives the amount of money and thousands of dollars in Carter's saving account t years after he opens it. So we need to know what does 1.01 represent in this expression. So we could compare it to our formula, a times b to the t, where in this case our a value, that is the 1.01, that is our starting amount. So this is when t equals 0. Since you can see if you plug in 0 into this formula, 
you get 1.01 multiplied by 1.005, that's our growth factor, raised to the zero power. But anything raised to the zero power is just one, so you get 1.01 multiplied by one, which is just 1.01. So we can see when it's zero years after the savings account was opened, that there are 1.01, and actually it's in thousands of dollars, so that's $1.01,000. And if we want to convert that, we'll just multiply by 1,000. So that would be $1,010. So if you want to see that, you can plug that into your calculator just to get the units right. But this would be $1,010. And so that is the starting amount in the savings account. And you can see that, again, that's going to be choice letter B. Carter's savings account had $1,010 in it when he opened it. And of course, if we were asked about the growth rate or what we're multiplying by every year or what percent we're increasing by every year, that would be dealing with B in this case. So that 1.005, that's B from our general formula, that's our growth rate. So let's do one more problem. And we have that the expression 6.7 multiplied by 1.45 to the T models the number of billions of genetic sequence bases available in the public database of the whole genome shotgun project T years since 2002. So what does 1.45 represent in this expression? So let's compare this to our general formula to start. So we have A multiplied by B to the T. And we know A is our starting value. And in this case, you can see that that's the number out front, this 6.7. So A is 6.7. And B, we know that's our growth rate. That is the number raised to the T power. That is 1.45. So Essentially, the 1.45 just represents the amount we'll multiply by when going from one year to the next. And you can see when t equals 0, that's 6.7. In our formula, we would have 1.45 to the 0, so that's 1 multiplied by 6.7. So the billions of genetic sequence bases available in the database in that first year so in 2002 would be 6.7 since like I mentioned we're going to be taking our growth rate and raising it to the zero power which is just one so you get 6.7 and again those units are in billions of genetic sequence bases available and from there if we looked at let's say t equals one we're going to take that starting amount that 6.7 and multiply it by 1.45 just one time Likewise, if we looked at year two, so now this was 2003, so this would be 2004, you would take the amount from the year before, that's 6.7, multiplied by 1.45, and then multiply again by 1.45. So now it's squared in our formula. But essentially, just reminding ourselves what this general formula means, every year we are going to be multiplying by this 1.45 since that's our growth rate. So looking at our choices here, it looks to be choice letter C. The number of bases in the database is multiplied by 1.45 each year.